Hello to YouTube, this is the Spoonie Bard, and I've got something completely different for you. I've recently been using a music program known as Deflamask to make songs in the style of old video game systems, and it's become one of my personal favorites. Not only for its excellent emulation capabilities, but because of continued support by its creator, known as Delic, as well as a very strong yet humble forum community. So because I'm a nice guy, I'm making this video for all the composers and remixers out there who want something that comes as close to the sound of the systems of decades past as possible without having to spend $100 on FL Studio or learn the often confusing MML to do it. Additionally, it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, so no matter what computer you have, you can use this awesome tracker. Currently, the latest version of Deflamask supports the following systems. The Sega Genesis, the Game Boy, the TurboGrafx-16, the Sega XY Arcade Board, the Sega Master System, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Commodore 64. Given all the different kinds of systems available for emulation, this will be a multi-part series of tutorials as each system operates slightly differently from one another. Stick with me and you too can become a chiptune master. However, before getting to the individual systems, this first part will be dedicated to the basics of the interface. Because if you know nothing about the interface, much like myself when I first began using this program, you're not gonna get anywhere. So, let's begin. Now the first thing you'll notice if you're coming off of more traditional music software, such as Logic Pro or FL Studio, is that the notes are not laid horizontally, but vertically. Also, the notes do not scroll endlessly. Eventually, the space you can write notes in will stop after a predetermined amount of spaces, but there is a way to fix that, which we will discuss later. Now, most of the song settings are edited at the top of the screen. Above the icon for the program, which should be a white mask, you can input the title of the song and the author's name. On the right side is the clock speed, which dictates how fast the frames play back. You can set it to NTSC, which is 60Hz, or PAL, which is 50Hz. You even have the option to set it to a custom setting by simply typing in a new number. While most consoles have both NTC and PAL as clock speeds, the Commodore 64, primarily being a European computer, only has PAL speed, though you can still enter a custom clock speed. This is one of three components that will impact the tempo of the song. The other two are found to the left of the mask, which are bass time and speed. The bass time basically divides the tempo of the song by whatever value is denoted. So for example, 2 plays the song at half the speed. 3 plays the song at a third of the speed, 4 plays the song at a quarter of the speed, and so on. The third element that affects tempo is the speed numbers. These denote how many frames each row lasts. By default, they are both at 3, which means every row lasts 1 20th of a second. By changing the second one to 4, every even-numbered row now lasts 1 15th of a second, and when the rows last longer, the song plays more slowly. The lower the number, the faster the tempo, and vice versa. It is recommended that you keep these two numbers as even as possible in order to maintain a steady rhythm, unless you want a swing rhythm in your song, in which case, make sure the second number is half the value of the first. Also, for those of you who don't like the fact that there isn't a BPM counter, this is just how these old video game systems worked. It wasn't until the Super Nintendo came around that video game systems could produce songs independent of their clock speeds. Other functions that can be found at the top of the screen include Octave, which changes the octave you input notes at, Arpeggio Tick changes the rate in 60ths of a second that arpeggios play their notes at, Rows edits the amount of rows a pattern can have, and the maximum value is 128. Highlights edit the placement of the highlights found in the rows, which assists with finding the values of measures and beats. The record box allows you to record notes onto the rows. You can't place notes unless this is checked, and it can also be activated with the space key. The follow box makes the tracker follow the song as it plays. By unchecking this, the rows do not scroll as the song plays. Repeat makes the song loop once it reaches the end. If you want to have a finale to the piece, uncheck this box. Step denotes the amount of steps or cursor moves when you place a note. This can be helpful when placing repeating notes, however the arrow keys only move one space at a time. I typically use the delete key to move through the song faster when there is a break in the pattern. Do not use the backspace key, as it will delete a space in the song, causing whatever notes are ahead of it to move closer to the beginning. For those who don't have a delete key, the arrow keys are your only option. The shrink and expand keys multiply or divide the number of rows in the song respectively by two. The track mode button can be pressed to switch to live mode, which allows you to record as the song is playing, and the tracker will automatically quantize the note to the nearest row, so there's no need to worry too much about accuracy. Finally, the on buttons which can be found in the column of each channel can be turned off to mute that channel. The commands in the boxes to the left of all the settings will be self-explanatory when you use them. There's not a whole lot to say about them, but if you have any questions, refer to the manual that comes with Deflamask. Now for the stuff that really matters, patterns and instruments. 
Duffel Mask, as well as most music trackers of this kind, operate on a pattern-based structure, which are sections of passages that can be repeated throughout the song by editing their respective numbers. For example, in this song, this instrument pattern is labeled with the number 1, and another pattern in the same channel also has the number 1, meaning the two patterns are identical. If you want to change the notes in the next pattern, it must be a new pattern. The number of the pattern can be raised by simply left clicking on it and holding the button down makes it scroll through the numbers without having to click repeatedly. The same happens if you right click the pattern icons but it instead reduces the pattern number. The change all box above the pattern matrix causes all patterns in one row to change simultaneously despite only one pattern being clicked. The insert button inserts a new pattern, complete with new number. The delete button deletes the selected pattern, and the copy button creates a copy of the selected pattern and places it under the selected pattern. There is no pasting here. Also, the arrows found on the right side have their own functions as well. The up and down arrows move the selected pattern up and down, and the double arrows function similarly to the copy button, however it places the copy pattern at the bottom of the song instead of under the selected pattern. Finally, there's instruments. These are what make the various sounds in Deflamask. There are three main types of instruments, those being FM, STD, and samples. Their use depends on the system. STD instruments are used in every system except for the arcade board, however they behave differently on the Game Boy and the Commodore. FM instruments are only used on the Genesis and arcade boards, but again, their behaviors vary. Samples can be used on the Genesis, TurboGrafx, NES, and arcade board, though they can be altered more freely on the arcade board. The same rule that applies to the patterns applies to instruments, where a new instrument must be used for a new sound, and they can be changed on the fly. Also found in every channel column is many sub-columns with different properties and functions. The first is where notes are displayed, the second is for volume, the third is for the instrument number, the fourth is for the effect number, and the fifth is for the effect value. Also, by using the plus and minus buttons at the top of the column, it's possible to add up to six more columns, making space for four simultaneous effects. By the way, the volume, instrument, and effect values are written in hexadecimal code, so I recommend getting good at it to accurately tune these values to your liking. As for the effects themselves, a full list is available in the manual, since discussing all of them would probably eat away at your attention span. Some are common effects that are shared between systems, such as arpeggios or speed changes, but others only affect a certain system and won't work for others. Some effects do transfer over but behave differently. For example, Sega Genesis channels can only be panned left, right, or centered, but TurboGrafx channels can be panned anywhere in between. Considering that I've taught you the basics of how to use Deplomask, I feel as though I can leave this here. In the next episode, we'll discuss how to use the different instrument types, and boy is that gonna be a doozy. See you then!